Now, being an island, we are lucky here in Ireland, here in Ireland, mm -hmm. that we have some of the most amazing seafood in the world. Indeed we do. We sent Laura to Galway Bay with Martin O'Donnell from the 12 Hotel in Barna for a masterclass in sourcing and cooking her own lunch. Yes, how does kind of fresh lobster and foraged seafood sound? Amazing. Sounds great. Let's have a look. Martin, it's a pleasure to be down your neck of the woods for a change. You have cooked plenty of seafood on the show in studio mm -hmm. for us, but it's really interesting to be actually out here where you'd be sourcing your seafood from. Lobster is really prevalent in the west of Ireland. Seaweeds as well. You know I cook a lot with the, with seaweed, so I think today we'll hopefully go and get some sea herbs as well. And then we'll incorporate those into the same dish, hopefully cooking lobster and sea herbs. So the first thing is we're going to head out onto Galway Bay. We're going to catch or find our lobster pot. Once we have the lobster, we'll head back to the hotel. We might stop off on the way, get some lovely sea herbs on the shoreline and cook some lovely lunch. I'll be starving by then. <laughs> Let's go. First up, skipper Kevin teaches us the basics of lobster fishing. Kevin, I've never been fishing before, as you know, and today we're hoping to catch a couple of lobster. But how do you do that? What's this for? Well, this is a lobster, tra lobster pot, OK? What we do basically is we put some bait in here and then the lobsters go in through here and then they can't get out. Well, we're hoping for some speed fishing today. We're gonna okay. lob it in now. We're gonna lob it in now. Out. You ready? In it goes. Here we go, we got a fine go with Bay lobster here. Cute. There you go, mm. big boy, big boy. It's, <laughs> it's a male. As you can see underneath here, it's got its little claspers, their little feelers on the females. So that's a fine meat male lobster. Definitely size, definitely the right size to keep. What size so do they have to be? They have Kevin? to be a minimum of 80 centimeters across the between the eye socket to the in there long. So that's a fine lobster. So this will give this to the chef. Thank you. You're gonna cook him this evening. Definitely. Back Excellent. To the hotel. We're just along the shoreline just before the hotel. Um, and we're going to look for some lovely sea herbs. We've got some beautiful ones here all around us. This one is actually sea radish. It's got a lovely peppery spiciness to it. So these ones we're actually going to use to season the, the dish at the end of it. So instead of using salt and pepper, we can use some of the seaweeds for giving some saltiness. And these ones give a lovely pepperiness to the dish. So let's get picking. You have me hard at work here, Martin. And we're looking for seaweed now. There's plenty of it around, but I'm not sure what I should be picking and why. Well, what we have here this morning, this one is a, it's a type of kelp, and there is quite a lot of types of kelp, but this is one that they use for a dashi. So it's a seaweed stock, so it's beautiful, really nutritional. It's not really edible in this state. Um, but what we do is we boil it with some water and some vegetables, and it makes a beautiful light dashi. But then after that, you can use it once, it's, once you have it cooked, you can actually wrap your fish in it like that, and then bake it on the barbecue so the fish doesn't actually stick to the barbecue. Uh, this one then is some gillisk absolutely prevalent in the west of Ireland. Isn't I've it? heard of this before, you've cooked with this before. Yes, I do an awful lot with this one. This is the one I grew up with, probably mostly. My grandparents used to pick seaweeds here on this coast, um, used to sell them in Galway Market, so this is something I've really grown up with. After a morning spent catching and foraging, it was now time to put it all together. Now, obviously, we're down here to cook, and that's what you're going to do for us now, Martin. So Definitely. here's our lobster, looking a little bit different to the last time we saw him. Sure is. This is the one that we got earlier on, just off uh, Galway Bay. So this is the way I like to prep it. I've taken off the shells and stuff. So this part is the, the lobster tail itself. These are the two claws, his knuckle and his parts of his legs. Given how big the lobster is, it's amazing to see the actual meat that comes out of it. And I guess that's why they are expensive. Well, and definitely, and that's the, all the hard work that goes into this, the skill and the technique to get it out without overcooking it. So what I've done is I've actually blanched this in a lobster stock for about four minutes. So with our lobster, you can see that the shells are starting to get nice and brown. So I'm going to add in our lobster claws. So they are going to require probably the most cooking. They require at least two minutes in the pan. It's a simple dish, though. This it's a very dish. simple dish, but there's a lot of skill and technique gone into preparing it. So how long will that take on the pan then, Martin? It's going to take about a minute or so more. I'm just going to pull the lobster off here so you can get a better look at it yourself, Laura. You get the lovely red colour coming up on the on the lobster claw, and that's the perfect time to turn it over. I'm gonna actually use some of the sea herbs that we foraged earlier on. This is the samphire here. That's the rock samphire, that one. We're gonna use that one, and we also have some sea radish shoots, and then we'll use some of the sea radish flowers for garnishing at the end. 
This is the claws and the knuckles. It requires the least amount of cooking. So I'm just gonna pop it here on the side of the shells. Again, I don't want direct heat to get to it. So we'll just, and it's just protecting it there. Lovely. Lobster has a unique smell. It's like a shellfish smell. And these, this butter should go lovely and red. It should be the color of the lobster. And you can see what we're doing is just baste it over like that. It's so simple. So Laura, I'm actually ready. We're gonna plate up here. Lovely. We're gonna put the potato terrine down first. We're gonna put the lovely wild asparagus over that. We're gonna place the lobster tail just over the potato. Our lobster claw. Our other lobster claw. Do you know what? It's really satisfying. We're about to tuck into something that we caught this morning and also ingredients that we foraged, that we picked off the beach. But there's only one little problem, Laura. We only got one lobster in the pot, so we're going to have to share this one between us. I don't mind if you don't. <laughs> no, of course not. Cheers. Enjoy. Thanks for a Cheers. great day. Thanks.